guys, welcome back. My name is Vicki Lynn and this is Cooking Vegan with Vicki. St. Patty's Day is around the corner and what do we need? We all need a good corned beef sandwich. So we can't have that when we're vegan, right? Wrong. We, I am going to show you a great corned beef sandwich recipe and I'm going to show you two different ways of cooking it. We're going to do the steaming process and we're going to do one in a pickling brine. So we're going to be making seitan. And don't forget, if you're enjoying these recipes, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Scooch over and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time one of my videos goes live. So the first thing we're gonna start with is our vital wheat gluten. And we're going to need a cup and a half of vital wheat gluten. All right, so we're gonna get that going. This is very simple. Um, a few things that you will, will need for this, and these are all kind of basic ingredients in um, the Vital Wheat Gluten you can find in probably any um, grocery store nowadays. Bob's Red Mill is a great resource for it. Um, there are quite a few um, herbs and herbs that I'm using, spices, um, and of course the recipe is going to be linked down below, so don't fret. We're going to be using some paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, some salt, some pepper, cloves, allspice, a few other recipes. If you don't have all of the spices, at least if you have the cloves, that'll give it that corned beef flavor. So you do want that one. We're gonna add some nutritional yeast because we all, us vegans, like our nutritional yeast and that's gonna give it that umami flavor. So again, about a quarter of a cup. And we are gonna add about two to three tablespoons of regular flour and this is going to give it a different texture it's going to make it a little bit more tender and that's what we want again this recipe comes together very quickly i am going to add a little bit of pepper to this okay all right about half a teaspoon so those are our dry ingredients okay that all together. Just, have a little, just whisk that together a little bit. We're going to let that sit. So now our next part is going to be our wet ingredients. I do suggest that you might want a pair of gloves. If you don't want your hands to be all red. Let me clear this all out of the way. So in our wet ingredients, you need a blender. And part of our secret ingredients is half a cup of red kidney beans. You can use any type of bean. I'm also putting in a cup and a half of a beef bouillon. And I've just used the no beef cubes and I've diluted it in a cup and a half of hot water. And we're gonna add that to our blender. Okay. And now my favorite ingredient, we're going to add one beet. I know, sounds weird, but it's going to give it that kind of reddish look. And I think that's it. Oh, and a tablespoon of a vegan Worcestershire sauce. I don't know if I said that right. I don't think anybody ever says it right. Add a tablespoon in there. There we go. Okay. So here we go. Lid on. You're just going to blend that until the beet gets all. going to pour that in. Make sure everything's blended. Yeah. Okay. Grab a mixing spoon. First we're just going to start mixing it and then we're going to get in and knead it with our hands. So again there's two ways of doing this. Again you can steam it. I'm going to do it half of it um, in the steamer and then half of it in a pickling brine. 
and I'll just, and then you can decide which way you like it. So when you steam it, it kind of firms it up totally different. Oh, actually, you know what? This is, you probably aren't gonna need your gloves. So you're actually just going to mix it together. And then if you find that it's a little bit sticky, this isn't actually too sticky, but if you do find that it's sticky, you can always add a little bit more of your um, vital wheat gluten, but this isn't too bad at all. See, not sticky at all. We are good to go. So we're, I'm going to divide this into two spots and we're going to handle it totally different, two different ways. So I'm going to do one, just a small one. And this one I'm going to steam and it is going to expand once it cooks a little bit. So we're just going to get some tin foil. And you're going to just make it into a log. Put that aside for now. Put it into a log. And you want to make sure you wrap it. Sorry. And then you want to make sure that you wrap it nice and tight. That's the, what you want to make sure. You want to make a nice tight log all the way down. And when you get to the end, you want to wrap both ends really tight because this is going to go against the side, okay? Then what I have is a steamer pot with a steamer jacket inside. We're gonna get that going and you're going to steam it for one hour. In this pot, I have some hot water and we're gonna make a pickling brine. So I'm gonna just use some pickling spices and we're just gonna add our pickling spices to this pot. A Couple of simple ingredients, again, Can't find my scissors. Can't get my pickling spices. There we go. Now they're coming out. Get your pickling spices in there. We're gonna add some salt because normally cold cuts and stuff are very salty. All right. And just a little bit of brown sugar just to add to it. Okay. A couple of bay leaves I'm gonna put in there and a couple of garlic cloves. And I'm just gonna slice these open just so they impart the flavor. You don't have to, you don't have to peel them. We're just gonna cut them open just so that they impart the flavor into the water because we're not gonna do anything with the water. Okay, there we go. And a couple of bay leaves. And you want to break your bay leaves when you're using them. There we go. And now for this, what I like to do with this is I like to use a cheesecloth. And I like to wrap my seitan in the cheesecloth just so the pickling spice doesn't um, stick to my seitan. And I'm just trying, I, I found my scissors, baby. My husband's running looking for my scissors. So I just like to wrap my seitan in the cheesecloth just so the pickling spices don't stick to. Um, so just cut that in. We're just gonna cut this. And you're just gonna, again, just wrap it loosely. You just don't want, I just don't like the pickling spices. I have a thing about the pickling spices getting in and again, it's going to just lay in the bath and you're going to bring that to a boil and you're going to put this in an oven at 275 for an hour and a half, halfway through at 45 minutes. You're going to turn it over and obviously have your lid, sorry, put your lid on halfway over 45 minutes. You're going to flip it over in the pot, put it back in for another 45 minutes and we'll see you when it's done and we'll show you the different concepts. Hey guys, so our corned beef is all ready. So this one was the one that was in the oven in the um, cheesecloth. So that's come out. I've let them cool overnight. So we're gonna take the one out of the tin foil. So this is the one that's steamed on the stove top. I just wanna show you both concepts just so you can see. See the textures. 
again, more like a log. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the camera in tight so we can, I can show you while I'm cutting it, okay? Okay, so this is the steamed one. And you'll see, we're just going to slice it really thin. And you can see, hoping you can see that, nice and tight. Oh my God. Just like pastrami. Oh my God. That's so good. Corned beef, pastrami. And then this one is the one that was, sorry, my cutting board keeps moving. This one was the one that was in the pickling. And you can see that's a little more tender. It actually feels even more tender. See how that tears apart as opposed to this one. A little bit sturdier. Let me just try this one. Mm -hmm. Definitely more tender. And that one ha definitely has more of a stronger um, corned beef flavor because we had it in the pickling solution. So now you need to give these two a try. Divide your recipe, see which one you like best, and don't forget to comment below and let me know which one's your favorite. The one we did in the brine or the one we steamed on top of the stove. I'm waiting to hear back from you. Thanks again, guys. See you soon.